And here is the Writer's Almanac for Friday. It's the 28th of June, 2019. It's on this date, 1928. Louis Armstrong and his band, The Hot Five, recorded West End Blues. He was 26. He was in Chicago. He'd been there for six years, moved there from New Orleans as part of King Oliver's band. They had parted ways three years before. West End Blues recorded in Chicago's OK Studio, a legendary piece of music, Earl Father Hines on piano, one of the first recorded examples of Louis Armstrong's scat singing. And it was a recording that took the jazz world by storm. When Armstrong sang the song live one night, the audience was so ecstatic it carried him off the stage. Gunter Schuller wrote that West End Blues made it clear that Jazz could never again revert to being entertainment or folk music. It served notice that jazz could compete with the highest order of musical expression. It summarized the past and predicted the future. It's the birthday of Mel Brooks, born in Brooklyn, 1926, served in the Army in World War II, deactivating mines after the Battle of the Bulge, went to work as a drummer and pianist in the Catskills, then went to work for his friend Sid Caesar, writing for his program Your Show of Shows in 1949. 1968, he wrote his first feature film, The Producers, went on to write Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, and space balls. It's the birthday of the philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau, born in Geneva, 1712, the man who wrote, Man is born free and everywhere he is in chains, author of The Social Contract, 1762, in which he said the natural condition of humanity is to be lawless and brutal, and it's through an agreed social contract that humans are able to rise above their own nature. It's the birthday of John Wesley, 1703, in Lincolnshire, England. His father was a nonconformist, a dissenter from the Church of England. John Wesley became a founder of the Methodist movement, preaching to people out in the fields in the small towns, preaching that Christians could be made perfect in love by taking action to please God and to promote the welfare of the less fortunate. He was an ardent abolitionist. A tireless man traveled a quarter million miles on horseback, wrote or translated more than 200 books, preached 40,000 sermons. John Wesley, whose rule was, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Here's a poem for today by Faith Sheeran, My Mother Pretending to Move to Alaska. For 30 years, my mother pretended she was moving to Alaska. She owned no maps of the state and did not try to visit. She lived on a hot island in North Carolina and could not drive in the snow, owned a thin winter coat, no boots or gloves. My mother survived things she hated by pretending she was leaving. Baby showers, years of teaching in classrooms where children built fleets of paper airplanes. She told me sometimes about Alaska, a place where she would live so far from the neighbors they could not maintain an interest in her business a place where there was so much snow she would not ever mow the lawn. On bad days, my mother imagined who she would be in that eternal winter, rugged, adventurous, warm because she was not thin. My mother was going to Alaska, and if she never got there, it was because her Alaska was not on any map and could not be reached by boat or bobsled. Her Alaska was a blizzard of privacy and imagination, its borders hidden or revealed by the snowdrifts 
in her mind. My Mother Pretending to Move to Alaska, a poem by Faith Sheeran from her collection Telling the Bees, published by Austin State University Press and used by permission here on The Writer's Almanac. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>